escape suspense. And here is the man of high adventure, George Sanders. <laughs> This is High Adventure, the meeting place for that society of men and women who live dangerously. But what exactly does it mean to live dangerously? Sometimes a man can be more danger on a busy street than in facing a wild animal. Are you one of those people? Good. Come right in and sit yourself down. That's it. Get comfortable. There's a better chair right over there, the one with the straps on it. That is, uh, if you are the nervous type. Oh, a thousand pardons. I did forget to introduce myself. I am John Sanders, and I serve as host for our High Adventure meetings. Uh, what is High Adventure, you ask? Suppose I say it is the bolt out of the blue of an existence. Perhaps I can better illustrate what I mean by an example. Take one man who let a beautiful woman guide him into greed. Then add another who was not a man, nor a beast. Some story. You're listening to George Sanders tell you of Who Walks Like a Man. Another transcribed story of High Adventure. A High Adventure story. This one is called Who Walks Like a Man? Brad Orkoff, there was a time in your life when you had the idea that money wasn't everything. But you soon outgrew such a nonsensical idea. And after the war, you decided to go after money and get as much of it as you could, no matter what the cost. So you decided that Africa might hold fortune for you. You purchased an army surplus amphib with the idea of flying cargo into the interior. It was just an idea you had. Until that day, you were flying over the Kumar country and saw that signal panel in the clearing. By the time you put your ship down on the water and taxied up to the door, there was someone waiting for you. I just let the float go on the other side of the dock. That's right. I was afraid you wouldn't come down. Well, I wouldn't, Hamlet. Hey, hello. There's a man up in the cabin who's quite sick. Can you get him to a doctor? I'd take him in the boat, but I don't think he'd live that long. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Some kind of jungle fever. I'm not a doctor. Will you take him out with you? In fair straight. What? i got to get paid for anything I haul. This is an emergency. i still got to buy gas. These days it costs You'll money. You'll get paid. That's all I want to know. You'll have to help me carry him. Sure. made you lay out an aircraft signal? I saw you fly over this morning. Thought you might come back this way. You did. I see. To the back door. Sure, baby. Well, he's sick, all right. Your father? No. It's kind of old to be your husband. I don't know who he is. What are you doing on Kumar River? That's no concern now. All right. If you'll help me carry him down sure, to your plane, baby, sure. your shoulders, will you? If he's the prospector, maybe he can pay for his own ride. I heard about one guy who... What's the matter? Got... Stand still, baby. Don't move. A gorilla. He's watching us. Don't move. Get out the front door. Jump us before we got halfway. Just stand still. What is it? What? I don't know. Just stand there. There's a gun on the shelf behind you, about as high as your shoulder. Gun. Don't make any fast movement. Reach behind you slowly, hand it behind your back to me. Oh, it's loaded. No time he to... Seizure. Go! Go. What? Go. All right, just one little shot planted in your brain. No. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him? Uh, no. Listen, I'm not so dumb. Wait, wait. Go. Sit. Sit down, Joe. Sit down. They... They're friends... Well, yes, Joe. Well, there, that's, that's better. That's much better, Joe. No, well, well. He talks. Yes. A gorilla, and he talks. Yes. He, I, I believe he thinks. He's tame? Yes, more, more than tame. <laughs> Lie back and rest. Thank you, thank you. I, I'm sorry I can't be more of a host, but I haven't been very well lately. We're going to fly you out to a doctor. Oh, no, 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 that isn't necessary. I'll be up and around in a day or two. Thank you, just the same, but I'll make out. Don't worry about Joe. He's no ordinary gorilla, I, I assure you. That's so big. Oh, Joe is full grown. 
You say he thinks, too, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure of it. But he's an animal. Animals don't think. I believe Joe does. You see, as I told you, he's no ordinary gorilla. Not if he can talk. Well, <laughs> you heard him yourself. Joe has been quite a companion to me these years. How did you teach him? Well, it was quite easy. I found him in the jungle not long after I came up here to study. His skull had been crushed by a falling tree. He was quite young then. I didn't want to see him die, so I patched him up as best I could. We believed that if the brain case were, were larger so that the, the gorilla's brain would not be restricted in its growth, then, then the gorilla's brain would enlarge enough for him to, to become a thinking animal. Exactly as, exactly as is man. I, I made his brain case large enough. When I inserted the silver plate, rebuilt his skull. Joe is a friend, a very dear friend. Isn't that right, Joe? Well, well best friend I ever had. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, mister, are you all right? Cough up his head. Gawk. He's not breathing. What's wrong? Gawk. He hasn't any pulse. Gawk. Well, the old boy was wrong. He won't be up and around. He's dead. Continued attacks of fever must have weakened his heart. The exertion of coughing was too much. The last one got him. Gawk. He can't hear you, Joe. Run. Gawk. Come on, Lincoln. Gawk. Uh, Watch out for him. Gawk. Get out the front door. It seems as if he's not playing. Gawk. Come on. Gawk. Gawk. What did you expect? Oh, I don't know. He's lived up here a long time. He might have picked up a few things. You live in a jungle long enough, you're bound to find stuff like rough diamonds, maybe a nugget, but this bird didn't. Perhaps other things were more important. Uh, yeah, like what? I suppose you want payment for digging his grave. Oh, I'll let that one pass. Well, I'll see you again sometime. Your boat running okay? I can manage. Well, I'll let off your ride down to the night, but you don't need it. Thank you. I gotta go before that gorilla drives me nuts. He's quite broken hearted. Oh, yeah, he'll get along. Like a man who's lost his best friend. Yeah, he just sits in there on the bench and calls I know him. how he feels. The only way you can Wait a know. Yes? The old boy did leave something. Joe! I don't understand. A talking gorilla, yeah. I think you'd better forget about it. Well, he's worth nothing in the jungle. Back on Broadway, you ought to come along. No, thank you. That's something I don't want to see. You're kind of hard to get along with, baby. Am I? What's your name? Does it make any difference? Yeah, with me it does. Will I see you down in Benoit? I don't know. Oh, I get it. You need a reason. I don't need anything. Sure you do. Come here. No. And I ought to do until I... Uh, no. Fight. No. Fight. No, no, Joe. No. Fight. No, we're not fighting, Joe. No. Fight. Uh, more no. More than you are. Uh, maybe he is. See you in Benoit, baby. Perhaps. Come on, Joe. Oh. Friend. Yeah, yeah, you're going to help me, and I'm your friend. Friend. Rod. I Adventure. Brad Orkoff, you and your newfound friend Joe took off for the States. Joe got used to flying, even liked it after a while. You didn't see the girl in Benoit, just gassed up and took off again. You did have some trouble getting Joe through customs and that sort of thing, but after that, you got what you were after, money, lots of it. It rolled in for you. Your friend Joe appeared with the circus, then on Broadway and finally on radio. It was difficult for people to believe that Joe was real, that is, until he went into his iron-bending act 
Strong men paled and weak women fainted. So you went on making money, more money and more money. You've been at it for almost a year when things began to feel wrong. You came back to your hotel late one night. Get up early in the morning. A bunch of doctors are going to examine you again. Doctor. Other doctors, you understand? Doctor's dead. Doctor, Doctor. I want a shot at you, Joe. I just had a bad night this time. Doctor, Doctor. You getting enough to eat? you happy? Okay, Rob. I give you everything you want, don't I? Oh, nice friend, Rob. Sure I am. When we finish health friends, I'll go back. Go back where? Back in the land of running schools. What, the jungle? What do you want to go back there for? Isn't this jungle enough? It smells good. What smells? Land all yummy clean smells gooder than here. Oh, it does. When we finish our friends, so we go last. Look, I don't care. I don't care. Go back any time you want. What? No, we'll no go. What's the matter? Don't I do enough for you? Go on, go on back if you want to. You don't go. We're going to date the plate of palace in about... Ah, oh, come in, come in. Well, you finally got home. I've been ringing your room all evening. Oh, I closed the door, bud. All right, all right. How much do you lose tonight? Ah, shut up. i got to talk to you tonight. I'm getting complaints from the booking officers. What about? I don't trust that monster. Get him out of here so we can talk. You can talk in front of Joe. We're friends. He may be your friend, but he's still a gorilla to me. Get him out. Uh, Joe. Friend. Rob. Go in the bedroom. Take a rest, will you? Okay. Rob. Boy, I'm afraid to talk loud around him. Hey, now listen. I got a big deal on where Joe plays a part of a fierce animal in the movie. He's not fierce. Sure he is. Anyway, it's a part tailor written for him and we can clean up. Uh, what's the matter with you anyway? Money? Money? Ain't you getting enough of it? Well, I will get a part from this movie deal, but we gotta work fast. He ain't gonna work anymore. What? What'd you say? Joe wants to go back, so he's going back. He's my friend. But this is money. And you always like money, chum, remember? He's going back if that's what he wants. Hey, are you nuts? What do you care what he wants? Shut up. So he talks. That don't make him human. Joe? Joe, come on up. Ah, what's the use? I'll talk to you about it in the morning. Joe! Joe! Hey, what's the matter? Gone. Out the window. What? He's loose? He wanted to go back. Gorilla loose in the city. Wild animal creates rain of terror. Hey, this is just the publicity we need. What a break. I'll call the papers. <laughs> And so, Brad Orkoff, your best friend decided to get a little air for himself. He wasn't really happy. You know, I can't really blame that poor creature. Civilization is so uncivilized, isn't it? And people seem to be getting wilder. What's that old song? Bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. Yes, man may not have made a better mousetrap, but he built a better jungle. Anyway, 
We have a real gorilla loose in a large city, a civilized beast roaming the streets lost in a modern jungle. And so we have the kind of story that only can be called high adventure. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was a United States senator and served as minister to both France and Great Britain. He was twice elected governor of the state of Virginia. He served as Secretary of State and Secretary of War, and in 1816 became president. During his two terms, many important events took place, including the acquisition of Florida from Spain and the admission of Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, Maine, and Missouri. You should have his name by now, but if you don't, here's an important clue. His statement that no encroachment of foreign powers on either North or South America would be tolerated is known as the Monroe Doctrine. Yes, he was James Monroe, fifth president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. The conclusion to Who Walks Like a Man. So, Brad Orkoff, you've lost your best friend. A strange one, but the only real friend you've ever had. You look out your hotel window and across the city, and you wonder where in that maze of streets and alleys can he be. Joe. Joe, who trusted you. Joe, who listened to you. Joe, your friend. And, Brad Orkoff, you began to wonder in your heart about what you had done to this animal, this almost human beast. And you began to wonder about your money and how much it was worth. And you worried, and you paced up and down in your room. Come in. I said come in. Now sit down, Buzzin. Don't start shooting off your mouth about it. You. Hello? How did you get here? By airliner. I've been here for some time. I'm a correspondent for several magazines here in the States, so why shouldn't I come back once in a while? What do you want? Thought I'd drop in, see if you remembered me. Say hello. All right, you did. Have you had any word about... If you me? came up here to say I told you so, then shut up and beat I'm it. I'm sorry. Well, don't be. I'm not sorry for you. I'm sorry for Joe. Everyone in the city is ready to kill him. Will you shut up? So you write, huh? A little. That's what you were doing up in the Kumar. I was trying to find something to write about. Well, you found it. Yes, I did. But I haven't written it yet. What name do you write under? Maybe I read some of your stuff. My own name. Well, what is it? Constance Whalen. They call you Connie for short. Sometimes. I heard it somewhere. Strange nobody's found Joe. Oh, they found him. For two weeks they've been chasing him, shooting at him, running away from him. Been all over the paper. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do when I get Joe back? I'd like to know. I'm going to take him back to Benoit. Then I'm going to stake out some land and run a plantation. Yeah, run a plantation. I always thought about that when I was flying over the Kumar. Beautiful. And up there, grow anything. Not too hot, not too cold. I've got pictures of it. And it's going to be Joe's place. You know why? Because it's his money that's buying it. He earned it. You talk like he's human. Sure. Don't laugh. He is. I'm not laughing. He's as human as you or me. Maybe more, I think, sometimes. Yeah. It was when we were flying back, I started to figure that way. He came out of the cabin and he sat in the co-pilot's seat and we talked. And then when we got here in the States, he'd sit and listen when I'd talk, like he agreed with all my gripes, felt good when I felt good, tried to like what I liked. I was always alone ever since I was a kid. I didn't make pals easy. Joe was a pal. You understand that? Yes. Yes, I do, Brad. In the same way with women. Always I picked the wrong... Always I picked the women who like you as long as you got the dough in your pockets to show them a good time, and then after that... Uh, sit still a minute. Yeah. Brad? Yeah, Buzz. They got Joe. What? Is he all right? They got him trapped in the warehouse over on West 21st. Cops all over the place. News photographers. What a story this is going to be. West 21st? They got Tommy Gun. Search lights. Just like the old gangster days. And... Brad. Come on. we got to get to him before they hurt him. Now you can write the finish of that story. And it's going to be a good one. 
I don't know. Come on. All right, all right. Let us through. Let us through, William. Look, I'm Brad Orkoff. Who? I'm the guy he got away from. Oh, well, you're just in time. He's all right, then. Yes, he's all right, but it won't be long. Now, look, wait a minute. We're going in there with Tommy Guns and Burnham out. No, no, you can't. We can and we are. All right, boys, let's go. Wait a minute. Wait, will you? I'm not going to take any chance he'll slip away again. He won't hurt anybody. Oh, sure, sure. He's got half a town hiding indoors already. Look, he knows me. Let me get him out. He knows you, huh? He'll come out if I tell him to. Then there won't be any trouble. We got the place surrounded. The easiest Will way you let is... me take care of him? You must not want to live very long. Look, I know what I'm doing. Just give me one minute. Hold it, boys. Be careful, Brad. Thanks. Yes. Honey. Yes? Bring the car up close so we can put him right in. The crowd might scare him. All right, Brad. Come on, get going. Hurry, baby. It's your own neck, you're risking. Look out fast and he jumped you. Joe? Joe? It's me, Brad. Come on out, Joe. We're going back, friend. Both of us. You hear? Back to the land of many trees. Joe! Are you sure that he's in here? He's got All right, let's see. Well, then I better go. Run. What? Run. No! Run. No, no, Run. no! no. Well, that's that. He won't scare anybody no more. Uh, what's the matter, buddy? Aren't you glad we saved your life? He was coming right at you with those big arms. He would have broke your neck with one swipe. He was a killer, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Ready. Yo. It wasn't your fault. I brought him here. The police were only doing what they thought was right. Joe was only glad to see me. He wanted to hug me. He was so glad. It's over now, Bill. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, I have to get aboard. Goodbye, Brad. Connie. Yes? Goodbye. I'll wait for you in the night. I'll be there. tingling tale of high adventure. I might add this thought if at some time or another you decide to make a monkey of yourself, give a careful thought. Your friends may notice the improvement. Well, in these days a lot of us seem to be acting like animals. Are you up a tree? Very poor attempt at humor on my part, I must admit, but I shall never give up. Never. <laughs> that make up high adventure. Be sure you're tuned our way at the same time next week.